here's a nice find. This is one of our native figwort species right here. Uh, and uh, I know that it's Scrofularia marilandica because there is a tiny little feature in the flower, which you're not going to really be able to see, but when I look at it with my loop, with my lens, uh, there's a tiny little undeveloped stamen up at the roof of the hood of this flower, and it's purplish brown. So that's how I'm identifying it to species, Scrofularia marilandica. This is a wonderful medicinal plant, although to be honest, I use the Asian species more commonly, Scrofularia nodosa, only because I grow that in my garden, so that's what I use. But they're very similar looking, very closely related, and can be used the same way. And of course, we could grow our native species as well. And uh, figwort is, uh, I believe, a very underused plant. Uh, it is uh, a plant that would be described as lymphatic by many Western herbalists. And in Chinese medicine, it is considered a salty herb that uh, is associated with the water element. So it helps to dissolve masses, tumors, and growths. And there is a bit of an overlap between what Western herbalists call lymphatic and that category in Chinese medicine. Uh, I have used figwort uh, quite a bit in protocols where there are cysts, for instance, ovarian cysts, benign breast cysts, uh, nodules, thyroid nodules, somebody prone to lipomas, things like that. Of course, in all these cases, there's a lot more you have to be addressing and paying attention to. But this can be helpful in uh, cancer protocols as well. I'm not saying it has anti-cancer activity per se. It would be part of a complex approach. And of course, that's a fairly advanced topic, but, uh, but it can be useful. Uh, enlarged lymph nodes. This is a very solid lymphatic that, again, I think is uh, often overlooked uh, by Western herbalists and not utilized enough. So a, a really good one to know about.